All right, so what's up everyone? It's The Real DJ Red. Um, you might hear chainsaws and stuff going on in the background because there's a lot of people still uh, cleaning up and trying to recoup from uh, Hurricane Irma down here in South Florida. Uh, doing a quick video real quick. Uh, went to go help a friend of mine last night with a generator um, at his house. And as I got ready to leave to head back home, it was dark and um, noticed that my tail lights wasn't working. Um, said, okay, fine, let me try to make it home in order not to get stopped and get a ticket or anything. Kind of drove with uh, left foot on the brake just a little bit, just for the lights to come on and stay on so that way, you know, wouldn't have any issues. I was gonna try to fix it last night, stop at my warehouse. I said, no, let me get home and um, deal with it today. All right, so, I had another friend of mine that have the same van as well. Uh, when his tail lights went out, it was the wiring for the trailer harness. Um, there was a cut in the wiring or something, and the, the wire that was going to the tail lights, uh, which was the brown one, might have ground it out somewhere. Um, he changed the fuse, put it back in, turned them on again, pop. I uh, went and checked it, found out that it was the wiring on the trailer. Uh, it was being closed up in the door. I know that wasn't my issue because I put uh, tape around mine that it won't cut the wires. So I know it wasn't that. I went and checked the fuse, um, which the fuse on this, the fuse box up on this one is up under the steering wheel. Um, far left column, second one from the bottom. Um, I don't remember if it was like a 20 amp fuse or something or maybe even a 15. Check the fuse. Fuse is fine. Um, my next thing I was going to do was check the relay. Um, we're starting to search where the relay was at. Something told me, well, just check the switch. Which I have it taken apart here. Let me flip the camera around here real quick. So I already had the switch taken out. I had to take uh, one screw under here and another screw over here up under the AC control panel and two more screws up under here and then once you get that out um, all of this is going to be intact in here there's a little tab inside here that holds the dimmer switch for the instrument panel as well as turn on the uh, inside lights and then there's a, a tab on each side on the inside of here to get this out once you take that out um, you can slide it forward I believe um, I did take this entire switch apart which I can pretty much do it again that top cover pops right off now if you look inside, you know, you see a little bit of grease in there and you see three, let me see if I can focus here, three gold tabs there. The one in the middle is for the park lights. The, actually, let me look on this side. In fact, let's do this. It wasn't hard to take apart. These knobs just slide right off. Okay, now you see one that's bent up a little bit higher than, uh, than the rest of them. That is the one for the park lights. What happened was it wasn't making contact with that gold strip on the bottom. This first one here, that's for the headlights. Second one is for the park lights. And third one I believe is the main power coming in. Um, it wasn't making contact with it, so I had to bend it back in place. Um, using just a regular needle nose pliers uh, took a couple of tries to get it in as soon as I did that bam it came right back on so I'm gonna just put this switch back in real quick and they slide you see that little hole in the middle it slides right over this pole so you put oh wrong one first gotta put the gray one in first which is for hang on a second we got some garbage on here put the headlight one back in first that's the gray one make sure it goes back on secure on the bottom 
then you put in the black one for the park lights. Hang on if I'm shaking the camera too much because I'm um, holding the phone at the same time. All right, now it's in place. Now I'm gonna go back here. Make sure that this knob is down all the way. Hang on. Let me put this down for a second and put this cover on. I'm trying to get a camera view. Alright, so I got the cover back on. Just turn on the park lights. You can't see the uh, dashboard lit up. I can see it from here that it's lit up. And... There we go. So, if you got the time to check it, um, you can do that yourself. Um, if not, you can probably uh, go to a junkyard. You might be able to find one in there. If you don't want to go through all of that, I would probably suggest uh, ordering it online from maybe Amazon. I'm not sure what the price would be, but that's a easy, quick fix right there. So it wasn't the fuse, wasn't the relay, wasn't my uh, trailer wire harness. Um, I know for sure it wasn't the fuse. I pulled that out and checked it. And I really didn't bother. I just looked at my wires in the back by the trailer connection, make sure it wasn't grounded out or anything, or make sure the, you know, the wires weren't cut or chafed or anything, and uh, went from there. So quick fix, the real DJ Red. And um, hope you guys uh, hope this helps someone's out. Um, and this might work on almost uh, any GM vehicle, um, the Astro van, the Chevy or GMC trucks, the GMC Safari, all you know have that same thing, same type of switch on here for the uh, older ones. So anyway, I'm DJ Red. I'm out. All right, so. Um I'm done checking everything. I'm putting the screws back in now. Again, you take out one screw from under here. I don't know if you can see it from there. But I'm trying to position the phone in a good spot. Uh, you put two more up under the dash. And while I'm doing this, i tell you that I did put it back together and then notice that the headlights wasn't working. Um, so I got that back done. It was part of the same problem I probably pushed the pin up a little bit um, when I was trying to fix the one for the park lights so everything is working fine now actually the, the switch feels real tight as if it's a brand new switch and um, I kind of like it that way it's uh, just like when I fixed my Pioneer DDJ. Um, worked on the jog wheels on it. And the left side was uh, was feeling really, really tight. My scratching, my mixing was a little bit off because of that. I took the whole thing apart. Um, found out where the lubrication is supposed to go. And I did it myself. You can check on one of my other videos for that. <clears throat> Um, you can check through my videos. You'll, you'll find that on there. I don't recommend doing it because, um, you know, your, your DJ equipment might be still under warranty. Um, mine wasn't, and I felt like it was a minor thing, and that's just me. I like to take things apart, see how it works, put it back together, go from there. You'll be surprised on how much money that you'll save sometimes when you do things yourself. If you know what you're doing and you have the right tools to do it with. Um, it, you, you can save a lot of money. Uh, example, my brother um, has a Pioneer DDJ SC, and there was an issue with it, and it took almost a month before he got it back because he had to wait on parts from Pioneer and you know for the uh, the repair company that was uh, fixing it. So sometimes when you do things yourself, you can save a ton of money if you know what you're doing, and if you have the proper tools to do it with. So I'm going to finish putting this back together.